My guest, Jeff Samanda, is president and founder of eChair LLC and has more than 30 years of experience in ergonomic design and has been issued six uh, patents that utilize ergonomic design. He has been fitting hearing aids as a licensed hearing instrument specialist since 2010. Jeff, what, why do so many caregivers struggle with inserting hearing aid speakers into our loved one's ears? I have worked with caregivers, with family caregivers in the clinic, facility caregivers in assisted living facilities and long-term care, uh, uh, assisted living and long-term care, nursing homes and so forth. And 80% uh, uh, of the hearing aids are called RICs. That means receiver in the canal. That means the uh, amplifier sits on the ear and the receiver or the speaker goes into the ear canal. And that's vital for the uh, hearing aid user to be able to hear and understand. If the speaker is not in the ear canal, then they're not getting the benefit of the hearing aid. And uh, so it's critical that the speaker be manipulated and moved and sufficiently deep into the ear canal. And there's two reasons why people struggle, Gary. And the first one is the speaker itself. Okay, so you see the speaker, there's nothing, but people use their fingertips to insert the speaker into the ear canal and caregivers have to put the speaker in other people's ears. So they don't know the angle, you know, ear canals angle and bend and uh, can be obstructed by cartilage and can narrow. And so the ear, the, they have nothing to push on. Uh, on the speaker. The speaker by design is very small. So that's one reason. And the other reason is that ear canals angle and bend. If the speaker is not in the ear canal, then they're not getting the benefit of the hearing aid. And uh, so it's critical that the speaker be manipulated and moved and sufficiently deep into the ear canal. You would think just because of how we think about ears, they're all the same, straight in, but everyone's ear, it's, it's, it's like an ear canal fingerprint. Everyone's ear canal is somewhat different. That's exactly right. And one ear can be different than the other. Amazing. I've seen so many ear canals. I remember one of them went in and down 90 degrees. The other one went in and to the front 90 degrees, you know, so they can hook around, they can bend and and go in one direction and then another direction. And uh, it's tough. It's tough to get it in there. And people are in tears sometimes trying to get their hearing aids in. And uh, caregivers struggle because they don't know which direction to try to aim the speaker. They don't have otoscopes typically. They don't have the time. They've got a lot on their plate. They don't have the time uh, to research uh, the ear canal. And so Again, if it's not sufficiently deep, if the speaker is not sufficiently deep into the ear canal, uh, it, it, they're not getting the in, intended amplification. You've done a lot to help caregivers and our loved ones with this. Tell me about the groove button technology. What is it? Why did you invent it? And how does it work? I appreciate that. The, the, uh, I've seen caregivers struggle, I've seen users struggle, hearing aid users struggle, and I knew I could improve it. Some, well, back in the early 90s, my brother and I invented a computer keyboard that uh, was ergonomically designed. And so I spent seven years working with Professor Mike Smith. He was the chairman of industrial engineering department at UW-Madison. And with the keyboard and ergonomic design and human computer interaction, I, I worked with them over seven years. And uh, I simply wanted to solve this problem. And so I applied ergonomic design to the speaker and to the fingertip. Oh. Yeah, and so uh, I invented an assistive device and have a patent uh, on it. and. Uh, and it's patented internationally as well as the United States. And um, uh, it's called Groove Button Technology. How can we as caregivers help persuade the hearing aid manufacturers um, support your work with Groove uh, Button Technologies? So you see that this is what it is. It's ergonomically designed for the fingertip. It's got a fingertip support. 
a fingernail groove and a fingernail backstop. So the fingertip fits in this and allows people to, to uh, control the receiver, manipulate it, maneuver it, aim it, and steer it past any obstructing cartilage and through the, the bending and angle ear canals. And, uh, and this is how it looks. So this is, a, this is how the fingertip fits into the groove button. I have tested these groove buttons uh, with prototypes, uh, but they had to be super glued onto the back of the receiver. And if you could only imagine what that <laughs> takes to super glue these little babies onto the back, and the super glue lasted a couple of months. These, uh, this groove button technology must be uh, produced and built right onto the speaker. And that's where we need the hearing aid manufacturers uh, to get behind this and to build it into the speaker. How can caregivers help persuade the hearing aid manufacturers to adopt groove button technology? I appreciate that question, Gary. There are three ways. The first way is to sign a petition. So I have a petition on my website, which is eachear.com eachear.com and you'll see the petition. We're petitioning the Veterans Administration to stipulate or mandate groove button technology. If they do that, the whole world gets it because the VA is the largest buyer of hearing aids in the world. And if they do it, it becomes standard. They won't make some with and some without. Everybody gets it. Uh, the other way, the second way is for caregivers to comment on eachear.com. There's a comment section called your comments and they can leave their comments. And the third way is to take a free caregiving training course called uh, Basic Hearing Aid Training for Caregivers. It's a free 40 minute video designed specifically for caregivers. Um, and uh, it's uh, uh, caregivers receive a, a, a certificate of completion and it's free for everybody. It's a public service of each year. Dot com. It covers the basics. It's just the right amount of training so that caregivers know what the speaker is and, and how to adjust the volume and how, how to insert it, what's involved. This is so important because we know that helping our loved ones uh, hearing efficacy helps them cognitively, helps uh, the, with fall prevention, does so many other important things. And, but then we walk into hearing aid caregivers without any training, without any knowledge, and thinking maybe we just need to shove that thing in. So what you're doing is you're helping educate us to be the best hearing aid caregivers we could be. When, when the loved one uh, is, has proper hearing, when the hearing aids are performing the way they should, as intended with the prescribed amplification, then we're active, we're participating, we have peace of mind. Uh, and the, the technology and these expensive hearing aids are working as intended. And uh, they're more secure. There's a number of different uh, benefits.